My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and you are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast. This is my conversation with a fellow called Josh Bradford. The reason for the discussion was to promote his band, which is Silverstein, their upcoming tour of Australia, which occurs through May of 2018. Let's hear what Josh has to say. Here we go. <laughs> Whereabouts are you guys at the moment? Are you back home or are you on the road somewhere? Yeah, we're home for a little holiday break. Um, just sitting here in my condo in Toronto. If I look out the window, there's snow on the ground. The sun is setting now. It's evening here. Uh, but yeah, it is it is cold out. Oh, so I'm looking forward to breaking away and coming down there for a visit. So you, you are coming down here in May with uh, your compatriots, Comeback Kids. Um, I, sorry, I can't remember the name of the singer of the band, um, but he's a good bloke, actually, and uh, had a chat to him about three or four months back. Um, he wasn't sure when he was coming down to Australia back then, but now the shows have been confirmed. So, mate, these are going to be some bloody epic shows. So are, are, you, guys, are you guys mates with Comeback Kid? Is, that, is, this, a, is this a double bill that um, you guys have done elsewhere? We have not done this exact uh, double bill where it's the, the two of us as the top of the bill. Uh, but a number of years ago, I think it was maybe even almost 10 years ago now, uh, the two of us supported Rise Against uh, across Canada and the U.S. So we got to spend a, a good solid few months together uh, and have become very good friends over the years. Um, yes, as you mentioned, we are both Canadian, so we have a little bit of that you know, uh, homeland pride uh, and have met up with each other at various festivals across Europe uh, and throughout Canada and uh, some other corners of the world. But, yeah, it, it should be an excellent, excellent tour. I'm expecting big things. I think the shows are going to go off. Uh, and, yeah, as you mentioned, Andrew, their singer, is a killer guy. Andrew, uh, and the whole that's band right. is Spot on. Yep. You, you got to – yeah, yeah. It, it should be just an amazing time, both on and off the stage uh, for us. Uh, but, yeah – most of the action, I think, will be on stage, and the, the crowds should have a good uh, a good thing to look forward to. I'd love it if you guys could produce a T-shirt with the Canadian flag on it in the same way that Lips from Anvil produced one for his Australian tour. I think it was his Australian tour that he produced <laughs> one. <laughs> you guys could do like a, you know, Silverstein comeback kid takes over Australia, Canada takes over Australia a tour or something like that and have that big Canadian flag on it, mate. That'd be awesome. I'd definitely buy that. It does sound pretty awesome to me as well. I'll put in a good word to the uh, the guys that design the merchandise. Wicked, mate. What about the show that you're bringing to Australia? <laughs> Are you bringing anything special down to Australia that you might not typically take on the road? Uh, I mean, we have had a new record come out uh, since we have been there last, and the new record has a bunch of songs and different tunings. So I imagine we'll bring a couple extra guitars than we normally would uh, and play some of those new tunes. Um, it, that's definitely, that'll be the biggest difference. I think, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be playing some of the old, uh, classics that people expect to hear from us, but we are very proud of this new record and, uh, playing some of the new songs has been, uh, one of the joys of this past year for us. So, uh, we're excited to share that with the, the fans down there. So, yeah, look, you touched on your uh, the record that's been released since you last came to Australia. That's Dead Reflection. Um, so that's your ninth album. So I need to congratulate you on achieving rare longevity in a notorious business, that is the music business. So, look, I take it you've done the hard yards supporting the album across North America and pro probably through Europe as well. What's the fan reaction and also critical response been like to it? Has it been what you expected? It's been very well received. Um, we, I don't want to say that we expect to be, uh, you know, given a chance on every record, but we have been uh, like working very hard all along to only put out what we think stands up to the at least the release before, uh, and people have come to expect some sort of consistency from us, uh, which at times could feel like a lot to live up to, but we're you know, as invested in making this band a, a career thing for us as we ever have been, even at the, this point where we're 17, almost 18 years deep into doing this, mm -hmm. I think we're still making some of the best tunes we ever have. So uh, it, it, 
uh, has been very well received both critically and from the fans. And, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to keep touring on it for the time being and performing some of the songs in front of some folks that haven't had the opportunity to see them live yet. So you've um, you've also had a fairly stable lineup. You know, you haven't had too many changes through the nine albums or so that you've released. True. What's the secret to that stability? And I guess that, by extension, sort of leans into the success you've had, really, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we have all stayed very invested in doing this. Um, so I think that makes it a little easier to turn out a quality product and kind of keep your head in the game uh, as far as staying on the same page with each other, the goals. Uh, and yeah, the, you mentioned we've been doing this a long time, put out a lot of records. I think one of the things that we've always enjoyed about doing it is, is traveling. Uh, so we kind of are slaves to this cycle where we'll put out a new record uh, and uh, start touring to perform the songs all over. I, I think some bands see that as a chore, but we, uh, yeah, yeah. we've always really enjoyed taking our music to new places and seeing the world uh, and being able to, you know, take something away from it personally as far as uh, just that experience of travel. Yeah, do you sometimes feel we like... Do you sometimes feel like you're a professional traveler as opposed to a musician? You're just somebody who hangs around, hangs around in airports as opposed to somebody who hangs around on stages and bars yeah. and clubs and arenas? <laughs> Certainly <laughs> at times it does feel that way. Um, I, I do believe we spend just about as many days in transit these these past couple of years uh, that we do playing. We spend more time in transit than we do on stage, so... It's uh, a, a kind of a wild life, but uh, at 45 minutes to an hour and a half, whatever that you get on stage, uh, definitely makes up for sitting in a bus or a van or a plane or a train or a boat, even sometimes for <laughs> hours on end. Yeah, yeah the, the, the payoff of performing is always a, a very nice thing. What's been the most, um, oh, I guess, bizarre experience that you've had whilst you're traveling? I mean, you know, you've got the really boring stories like waiting in hour and two hour long airport queues and the like, but mate, what's an experience when you've been traveling where you thought, what the heck just happened? <laughs> I mean, we've had lots um, from the kind of basic travel woes of having flights canceled or massively delayed um, straight on through to experiencing some horrible, horrible things that you never want to experience on the road, like having... Uh, some crashes in the vehicles. Um, oh wow! Okay. Yep. Thankfully, we have been very lucky. Yeah, we've been very lucky over the years. You know, for as much traveling as we do, it's all been fairly, uh, fairly safe. Uh, but we were on a, a tour when uh, friends of ours crashed and and lost uh, some lives. Wow! Okay. That has yep. maybe been one of the hardest and uh, <laughs> darkest moments of doing this, and it, it does question uh make you at least question whether or not you want to keep doing this at times because it has that uh potential to go very wrong uh but i mean most of the time you feel very invincible and fortunate to be able to do these things so yeah yeah cool those man. Yeah. kind of bad memories drift away yeah yeah i've spoken to a few i was done over I think I'm well over 200 interviews at this point, and uh, there's a far higher percentage than I'd like to acknowledge of uh, musicians that I've spoken to who have stories like yours, where they've either been in significant accidents right. themselves, or they've um, they've uh, I was, you know I've spoken to Mike Terry, um, who's in Volumes, and I can't remember the name of his previous band, but they had a very bad accident um, whilst they were on the road, and I did ask him. I said, "Does it affect the way you look at?" touring you know does it does it make you a bit skittish about wanting to go back out on the road and he was he was seemed to be quite at ease with the whole thing and just looked at it as one of those things that tends to happen if you spend a lot of time in vans on the road um but then you get the opposite yeah you got to figure with the amount of time we're out here doing it it's, the odds are against us <laughs> yeah you're not wrong yeah and and did you when you were starting out in the band did you ever get into a situation where you had you know a 25 year old Chevrolet van or something like that and you had the U-Haul on the back and you were thinking, oh God, 
let's see what let's see you know let's see if we get there on this trip here or is it just youthful energy and enthusiasm that seems to sort of will you forward onto the next destination I think definitely that youthful enthusiasm plays a big 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 part in it uh and a lot of the times when you're starting out you're in a, a cheap older van like you might have mentioned uh and you're yeah kind of just holding bits of it together with rope and yeah. duct tape and hoping you make it to the next show and it's it's yeah some of it's just i think dumb luck that you even get there um but we like i say i've been very lucky i remember a, a very early tour we were going somewhere in the winter uh in the northern united states and uh on the highway it hit a patch of ice and spun out and uh our trailer broke open and scattered our gear all down the icy highway wow, and that okay. was terrifying but really no no one was hurt or anything we just had to go walk the road and pick up all our equipment and get towed into town to get the tires replaced but no one was injured mm. yeah it, it seems silly sometimes like when you're like well we just have to get to that next show and you're pushing on maybe through terrible weather conditions uh just kind of crossing your fingers and hoping for the best yeah, there's that obligation. There's that obligation you must feel as a performer and as a musician to turn up for paying punters, isn't there? But geez, yeah, it's a, it's a line ball call sometimes, isn't it? Especially in your part of the world, with um, you know, of course we've got we've we don't have the conditions that you guys have over there in terms of the driving conditions. We just don't have them. You know, the the right. wind and the sleet and the snow and all the rest of it. So I've never driven in the snow actually, so I couldn't even couldn't even imagine what it must be like to be driving in a bloody um. I wouldn't call it a blizzard, but you know what I mean. I don't know you don't drive in a blizzard, but when the sleet's coming down and you can barely see sort of 30 feet in front of you, like you guys have no doubt had to experience. Yeah, it can be very dangerous. Hmm. Let's change track. Um, I've spoken to a few... <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from the frying pan into the fire with this next question, I hope you don't mind me asking this question here, actually. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> here no. we go. So I've go spoken... I've spoken to a few victory artists over the years, and um, Tony Brummel, the label founder, is rather controversial. Let's put it that way. He's a rather controversial individual, according to many. So what was your experience like working with him in the label? I mean, <laughs> we we definitely had some really, really good times with Tony uh, and, and the label. Uh, definitely helped launch our career. Uh, and we owe them an awful lot. And we have managed to stay on uh, good terms with most of the staff over there and, and Tony himself. Um, there, I can't say there have been moments of tension. Um, and he definitely has a strong sense of how he wants to run his business. And uh, if you don't play by his rules, it, it causes <laughs> some stressful situations and, and, can lead to communication breakdown, which is not something you ever really want to have in uh, mm-hmm. in between your like yourself as the artist and the label that is uh, kind of holding your your music hostage over you. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But as I say, we we really uh, had heard some of the rumors about how dealing with them can be uh, before we ever signed and decided to sign anyway because they did have a, such a good foothold in the industry at that point, especially for our scene. Yep. Uh, so we made the, the decision to go ahead and work with them. And uh, like I say, they, they really did help put us, uh, help, help give us a really good kickstart to our career. Uh, and we learned how to communicate with them and uh, overcome any of the obstacles that I'm sure you've <laughs> heard of uh, in other tales. But yeah, I, I, I think, it is another part of what has helped uh, us have a longer career is learning uh, how to kind of communicate your way through kind of sticky situations with people that don't necessarily communicate the best. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Look, thanks for answering it too, because I realize that can, that can be a rather challenging question. There was a manifesto put out there about a year or two ago. Now, I can't remember the name of the individual or what band he was a part of, but it was quite horrific. It was quite a horrific read, I've got to say, um, in terms of what, if it's, if it's true, and I'm not saying it's true, um, 
what people in the office had to put up working with him. And I think Hawthorne Heights in particular were a band that was singled out for unique attention from him. Um, and, uh, and, and I thought, shit, you know, um, we as fans, we only see what goes on on stage. And occasionally we press the flesh. And in my situation, you know, I'm privileged enough to talk to the artist. Um, but, you know, I mean, when you're dealing with labels and the like, and I know labels are almost a thing of the past these days, but, you know, when you're dealing with people, if you like, who, I can't remember the words you used specifically, but, you know, they're holding your music against you or something, you said words to the effect like that, and you didn't say that's what Tony did, but you're talking that that's sometimes the power that the labels have. You can feel pretty goddamn powerless at times, can't you? And you can sort of think, God, you know, combining... God, this is, I'm on a bit of a downer trip, this 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 interview, unfortunately. Sorry, mate. <laughs> this bit. You know, you've got to do all this you travel. Know, we're talking about serious stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, it's serious stuff. You're right. And it, look, it's, you know, you've got to do all that travelling that we talk about, and oftentimes you're travelling in not the best circumstances, and then you've got to deal with labels um, who might not have the business best interests at heart. And at the same time, you're a young bloke, so you want to have fun in life. You know, so it's <laughs> you can understand why so many bands sort of up stumps after an album or two even if they've had some success and go, bugger it, I might as well just go and get an office job somewhere. I think it's going to be easier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can see why a lot of people would end up feeling that way. Um, at the end of the day, this is a business. Uh, it, it can be one of the most fun businesses to be involved with. Uh, but it, you still have to do work, you know. Uh, and on the label side, they're even much more of a business than the band. Uh, and they're trying to make money and I can definitely like feel their pain as physical record sales are down year after year. Uh, there's a lot less money to be made yep. and they don't get the, the fun experience of traveling around like the band does. Um, but yeah, like the, the band themselves has to be business minded. You got to kind of have goals and, and be willing to, to work hard to go after them. Yeah. Uh, yeah or else you're yeah, probably just going to have fun for a couple of years and then fizzle out. Yeah. I think you guys are a band or a good illustration where you've had your career in your, home, your own hands. Clearly that's been the case. You know, you've made your own decisions and you have worked bloody hard to achieve the success that you've got. It's not happened by accident with you guys. Absolutely. We, uh, from day one, have been very hands-on in what happens in our career. Um, we have worked with managers over the years, but ultimately all those relationships ended because we felt that we had the best idea of what we needed to do and had the best ability to kind of affect any changes that needed to happen in our band uh, with, beyond anybody kind of telling us what to do. So for the past few years, we've been self-managed, uh, and they've been some of the best organized uh, and planned out uh, years in our career. Excellent. So. All right, mate. Look, I better let you go. Um, Josh, you're a legend. Thanks so much for having the chat, and um, I look forward to watching you guys when you come down here with Comeback Kid. I'll definitely be at the Brisbane show. Yeah, I can't wait to come visit. Uh, thanks for chatting with me. I hope you have a great gig tonight. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and, uh, I, I, I play in covers. I play in covers bands, so I play to. Uh, I'll be playing to seventy-year-olds tonight. God bless them. But uh, yeah, I play at uh, in, cool. in Australia. I think you call them legacy clubs in Canada. Uh, return services, you know, war veterans. Okay. Um, so I play. Uh, I play in covers. Yeah, yeah, bands. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So RSL clubs, they're called over here. So Twin Town Services Club, Tweed Heads. In northern New South Wales, got to go down there and play that. Got to play four sets tonight of Linda Ronstadt and all the hits. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Cool. That sounds like good fun. <laughs> oh, it's it's not bad. I'm I'm you know I do, I do prefer my funk and my rock music. There's no doubt about that. But uh, mate, a gig is a gig at the end of the day. So you do what you got to do to put bread on the table. Gig is a gig. Yeah. Yeah. Getting up there and playing is what it's all about. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith, and you are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast. That was my conversation with Josh Bradford, who is a member of the band Silverstein. Thanks so much for listening.